Hi Rachel, this is Tony, and I'm doing a critique on your landscape photos. So I see the first three that you have here are your uh, exposure compensation, so that's great. That's worked out really nice. Um, you know, and, and as you can see, um, being able to uh, use that exposure compensation to brighten or darken your pictures could be uh, very important for what you're doing. Uh, the next one down here is uh, with this one um, on this walkway uh, leading off into the distance here uh, with the shallow depth of field it's very nice uh, with this little log right here you know being in focus and everything else being kind of a softer um, really emphasizes um, the sharpness of of this particular little log pier whatever they call that um, and the fact that you have all this kind of brightness, sunshine on the uh, walkway right here, it really keeps your eye focused in on that. So that, that works very nicely in terms of composition. The next one down. Um, nice reflection in the water there. Uh, and also a very nice exposure, good exposure. Sometimes uh, an exposure like this, the camera's meter can be fooled a little bit by... Um, uh, overexposing it a little bit because you have kind of a subject that's got a lot of darkness in it but uh, uh, this works out very nicely. Um, I might have cropped it a little off the uh, maybe I would have cropped a little of the sky to kind of have more of uh, this emphasis right here and I really love the reflection of the sky in here and uh, you know th there might be this a uh, little bit of interplay um, between the actual looking into the water and also the reflection of the sky. Uh, this one um, is very similar to this one, but the exposure on this one, uh, which is a little bit darker than, than what you have right here. And so uh, this is this is kind of what I was talking about before. Sometimes if you look through the back of the camera, you can see that this is a little bit overexposed. And it can, that's mainly because the camera's meter might have seen this even a little darker area right here and been fooled into, um, you know, in terms of when you're using your exposure, that uh, what it'll do is it'll overcompensate and make parts of your picture, make this part of your picture a little bit overexposed. So perfect example to when, if you're looking through your camera and, you know, you get a, a, like a shot like this where the exposure and everything looks really nice, uh, and then you get a shot like this where the exposure right in this area looks a little bit washed out. That's when you want to use that exposure compensation. This would be a perfect example. This next one with the uh, berries, very nice. Uh, red and green being complementary colors. You have that nice, um, uh, basically, how the colors work together going for you in this one. And the fact that you shot this with a shallower depth of field than what you did with these uh, other ones up here. You know, like with this one, you have a much uh, bigger depth of field, everything in the foreground to everything in the background being in focus. And then with this one, where you're shooting it with your aperture a little wider, maybe wide, all the way wide open, and you have a shallow depth of field that uh, the leaves and everything being out of focus in the background there really adds to the drama and the sharpness of these red berries. So very nice with that. This one also, uh, it's, it's sometimes it's hard when you're shooting in towards the sun where you kind of get this kind of a wider looking sky. Um, always kind of a tough thing when you're doing landscape photography. Uh, and of course if you know a little bit about Photoshop you probably could burn that down, make it a little bit bluer or whatever to keep your eye really concentrated in on like this this area in here where your interest is of that uh, bridge right there. Um, very nice, but uh, yeah, my only criticism would be uh, if you can do a little, if, if you have access to Photoshop and do that kind of thing, that's what I would recommend, but uh, I'm just being picky on that one. But otherwise, uh, uh, the nice interest, you know, in terms of the composition and putting the bridge not right in the center, but to go over off to the left side there and balancing it out with this um, grouping of trees over here. Uh, very happy to see that you went out and you know spent some time because I know 
it's not always easy just to come across uh, these birds. Um, these uh, this uh, wetlands kinds of birds that are flying around there, an egret or whatever that might be. Um, beautiful shot. Too bad, uh, you know, if you'd had maybe a little bit longer lens, you know, it'd be definitely be like a perfect shot for like a, you know, a wildlife um, kind of thing. And also another thing too is when you're looking back at these, you know, this kind of darker um, area here with all these kind of dark green trees and the dark reflections in the water, Another thing, too, where if you had the time, now I know this might have been something where you had your camera on automatic and all of a sudden you saw this bird flying and you just reached up and, and shot it. Um, but you can see right here that it could go a little bit darker and that would also maybe give a little bit more drama to the, to the bird and a little bit more saturation with the, you know, the yellow of the beak there. But uh, otherwise, very nice. And this... Uh, you know, I love this area right up here with this really dark area where it really contrasts with these uh, yellow daisies. Um, and then you can see down here that it looks a little bit, just a little overexposed. So that if you had underexposed just a little bit, one of those, another one of those things where the uh, minus exposure compensation, if you just done that, this would actually make this pop out more. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just being a little on the critical side, but, uh, but a beautiful image. I love this image. This is a terrific image. And in terms of composition, it also, you've also composed it so that the flowers are in that area of the rule of thirds, you know, where if you split a picture into three parts um, horizontally and vertically, that, uh, you know, the area of interest here is pretty much right where the flowers are. So very nice image. This is also, I really like this image too, uh, you know, very, uh, a great wildlife kind of shot. You know, of course, if you could, you know, get in a little tighter, it's always one of those things where, you know, the interest of, of this is, is, is pretty cool. Um, I probably would have chopped off a little bit off the right side here in terms of composition and maybe a little bit off the bottom and uh, just a little bit right, just to make the turtles a little bit bigger. Um, and as you can see right here too, you probably could have done another one of those kinds of things where you did a little bit minus uh, exposure compensation to uh, give you a little bit more um, contrast. And another thing too, when you're shooting uh, subjects like this, you know, they may have jumped off there when they saw you, but, uh, you know, getting down low, getting it a little bit closer to water level and looking back at them, that might have been really pretty interesting, especially with this little one uh, on top of the, the shell of the other one. Um, just a little suggestion there. And uh, what a beautiful shot this is, too. Uh, and, and, you know, once again, uh, those things where you think, oh, boy, if I only had a telephoto lens, then I could really have zoomed in on the, the bird here. But uh, fantastic that you got a shot. Uh, of the bird in action, looking like it's uh, eating something, you know, maybe sw getting swallowing something there. But uh, you know, if you had the ability to be able to get in there and crop in really nice and tight on on that bird, oh, how fantastic that would be! But otherwise, great that you got the the shot here. Um, and oops, blackboard looks like it it jumped. Oh. So blackboard is acting a little funny. Um, Let's see if I can get back to your shots here. Uh, anyway, um, if, I, if Blackboard is not cooperating here, I might not be able to get back to your picture there. But uh, anyway, so uh, very nicely done. Very happy with the work. And um, we'll uh, do the uh, macro um, critique very soon. Thanks.